Okay, we want to use tangent line approximation to estimate the cube root of 9. So the cube root of 9, that important information there. To do so, I do have our uh, tangent line approximation formula going on here. But the first thing we want to do is we want to pick out what function do we need. Like what's our f of x in this case? So that goes back to the fact that we want a cube root of 9 should be pointing us towards we want a cube root function for f of x. All right, now we want to pick some value a that's going to be close to the one we really care about. So what value is should we pick that's going to work out nicely for a? All right, so in this case, because we're dealing with the cube root function, what we should probably pick is something that will work out nicely when we take the cube root of it. So that's where I'm going to point us towards our perfect cubes. So perfect cubes are going to be numbers like 1 to the third power is 1. The number on the right side would be a perfect cube. 2 to the third power equals 8. Well, that's pretty close to 9. Let's try 3 to the third power. That works out to be 27 and not very close to the number we are going to care about this 9. So let's go with 8 as our value for a. So 8 is going to go in here for a. So the other things that we want to do is we want to evaluate what is f of a. Well, that's going to work as the cube root of 8, which as you can see is the same thing as the cube root of 2 cubed, which is going to be 2 as the cube root and the fact that it was cubed, kind of the inverse operations of one another. All right, so like we said, we said that was f of 8 turned out being 2. All right, next up, f prime of x. So let's go back up to our original function, that cube root of x that we chose. If I rewrite this with a fractional or rational exponent, then we can use the power rule to take the derivative. So the derivative here is going to be 1 third, bring the exponent down. Now we reduce the exponent by 1. So 1 third minus 1 is the same thing as 1 third minus 3 thirds is going to get us to 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds, which looks a little bit strange, but let's go with that for right now. All right, next we want to evaluate what is f prime of a. So that's where we take our value for a. Here, I'll write it out. This is going to be f prime of 8, because that was our value for a, is going to be 1 third times 8 to the negative 2 thirds power. Let's do a little bit of reducing down here. First thing I'd probably do is rewrite this so it's 8 raised to the positive 2 thirds power down in the denominator. All right, from there, let's see if we can reduce even further. Okay, that's going to be the same thing as the cube root because our denominator is a 3 of 8. And we can say that's all raised to the second power because our numerator is a 2. All right, I know it's a little bit of work to reduce this down, but we're trying to get to a nice exact answer. All right, the cube root of 8, as we saw up above, is going to work out to be 2, still raised to the second power. So this works out to be 3 times 4 is 1 twelfth is going to go for our derivative of 8. All right, let's see about filling in all of these components into this nice formula that we have. All right, first I'm going to make the general. Um, this is how we can approximate. So I'm not going to plug in our 9 yet, but I will in just a minute. All right, so the first thing is f prime of 8 is going to be 1 twelfth. And then on the inside here, we say x minus a, which we had pointed out was going to be 8, plus f of a, well, f of a, f of 8 in our case, was plus 2. All right, now that we have our formula, let's actually use it to approximate the cube root of 9. Okay, so this is going to work out to be where you replace the x with a 9. It's going to work out to be 1 twelfth, in our case 9 minus 8, plus 2, which all works out to be 1 twelfth times 1 plus 2 would be 1 twelfth plus 2 would be 2 and a 12th, or if you want to get a common denominator, it would be 1 12th plus 24 twelfths. Works out to be 25 twelfths as an exact answer.
Now you may be saying to yourself, okay, well, how close is that, right? We gave an approximation here at the end that f of 9 was going to be appro approximately 25 twelfths. Well, we can put 25 twelfths in our calculator if we're allowed a calculator. And our approximation is going to work out to be 2.08. 333. Three, three. All right, keeping so many decimal places. We could also, if we're handy with our calculators, evaluate what is the cube root of 9. And as a decimal, this works out to be 2.080083. So as you can see, our tangent line approximation, because 8 was pretty close to 9, if we go two decimal places, we're the exact same between these two. All right, so I hope this helps out as you're trying to work through, understand tangent line approximation. I would probably just off to the side, kind of list out these are all the different pieces I need to put this all together and then plug them into the formula as you go. Good luck.